Yo, it's your boy Kai. Hello and welcome to Kai Watches Gilmore Girls, the show that documents my experience watching Gilmore Girls for the very first time. Well, we are up to season five, episode eight. The title of the episode is The Party is Over. A lot went down in this episode. We have a lot to get to. I just, I have so many thoughts right now. It's not even funny. I just finished watching this episode. I have so many thoughts like about all of this that just transpired. Uh, before we get started, if you enjoy this whole experience right here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell that way you are the first person to be notified whenever i post something here on youtube before i post anything on tiktok or on instagram about gilmore girls i'm going to post it right here on youtube first so if you want to be the first person to see it all make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want some gilmore girl merch if you want some t-shirts and bags and hoodies and all that kind of stuff with some of your favorite gilmore girls phrases and situations Visit my website, thevibewithkai.com, and click on merchandise. It is all there, there, and it is on sale right now. And you can follow me on your favorite social media platforms. Follow me on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at The Vibe with Kai, where I'm always posting things that will help you do good, feel good, be good, and live a good life full of good vibes. My friends, this is Season 5, Episode 8. The party is over. Let's get right to it. The episode starts off. We see, uh, we see Lorelai and Rory, who are still going to the separation dinners that are happening where Richard gets the appetizer slash drinks and then Emily gets the actual dinner itself. They're, they decide to have some skewers, some skewer appetizers for um, for Richard's portion today, which might I, might I say looks, looks pretty good. It looks pretty delicious, I'm not gonna lie. But Emily comes in and she's not happy because she's all like, you now you're not even gonna be hungry. You better eat all the food that I give you too. And then her and Richard have another argument to, solidify that they're separated but then we're going to get more into why the writers did that in a second then we head on over to emily's portion of the friday night dinners where they're being fed some food what ends up happening here is rory gets a phone call from dean and when she comes back emily's like who is that on the phone and she's like oh that was dean we're back together and emily's like wait what Emily has her feels about it. You know how I know she has her feels about it? Because she heads on over to Richard's side of the house and they start to scheme with each other. I, You know, as soon as I saw her knock on the door, I was like, they are going to go this route and I am not going to be happy about it. But they did it. They did it. I knew they were going to come together to, to because of Dean. I, I just, I knew it. I, I should have said it out loud before and because now people are going to think that I'm making it up just because it happened. But no, I did have that thought, but I, I didn't want to get ahead of myself. I should have said it. Uh, we have Keon and, and, and Lane here. Uh, I'm glad to see her back. She was a funny character. Uh, I'm glad to see her back. I'm not sure if we're going to get more of her in the future, but I hope we do because I, I love this pairing. I love this pairing a lot. Um, I love this because Lane gets to I guess kind of take her in and teach her how to deal with life living at Mrs. Kim's house. And she gives her cheese fries and all that. And Keon is so innocent. <laughs> She's so innocent. But I love I love their exchanges that they have here in this entire episode. Then we have Paris, who uh, is under the assumption that just every professor at the school wants to get with her. Like every professor let me remind you <laughs> let me remind you that it is like yes this, these are relationships between two consenting adults yes however at harvard it is not allowed I, in a couple a couple episodes ago uh, i think it was last season actually i did go into detail about harvard's policy about student relationships with professors whether they are teaching them or not it is not allowed um it wasn't allowed back then in 2004, and it's not allowed now in 2021. Nothing has changed, but she is under the assumption that everybody wants her, which was a funny little tidbit um, to throw in there. I don't know if they're going to continue to have this as an ongoing joke. It made me feel a little bit uncomfortable, especially given today's world. I, I guess this, this joke did not age well, in my personal opinion. We'll actually get more into that uh, a little bit later when it comes to Rory and the party. Here are, here are our schemers, Richard and Emily, coming together to join forces to kick Dean off the show so he can go fight some supernatural beings. That's what they're doing here. Richard's mustache is like, get him off the show and have him fight some monsters. And Emily's hair is like, I made him do it. 
they're coming together to to find Rory a, a better a better suitor. I, oh man, I just I have so many feels about this and about Dean in this episode. So many feels. I'm telling you, you know, I know a lot of people don't like Zach and Lane, but she's so happy. She is so happy, and like I can't. I can't fault her. Like I'm, I'm like I said before, I'm still a team Dave fan. I miss Dave a lot. However, Lane is so happy. Is Zach the brightest bulb in the light shed? I don't know if that's the phrase. No, he's not. But she's happy. And that's literally all that matters. Oh gosh, TJ and Liz. They get a lot of action in this episode, right? They are moving to, they, they are buying a house in Stars Hollow, which begs to ask the question, how much does the Renaissance Fair pay? How much money are they making at the Renaissance Fair selling those necklaces and, and earrings and stuff that, that they could buy a house in expensive, expensive Stars Hollow? I'm going to assume that Star, like, Stars Hollow is expensive. I'm just going to assume because... I mean, I don't know. They just, they, I guess they just have money. Everybody in this show has money. Everybody in this show has money. Even like, like it's funny because out of all of the people that have money in this episode, you would, if you were to ask me, okay, who has the least amount of money? I would say Luke, right? Because of, but mainly because of his modest lifestyle. But he's rich too. Remember in the previous episode, he was just able to just willy-nilly buy a whole set of golf clubs? Do y'all know how expensive that is? Remember when he lent $30,000 to Lorelai just because? And he didn't tell his wife, but we don't talk about that, do we? <laughs> Remember? He's, yeah, like everybody here has money. Everybody here has money. I mean, good for them. I, I can't fault them for that. Good for them. Mrs. Kim finds out about Zack and Lane, and she is not happy. She comes over raining hellfire on Zack, and I think she she might have, like, a voodoo doll or something. She cursed this boy um, for hugging Lane because Keon uh, tattletailed here, and, and Mrs. Kim is not happy about it. We haven't seen Mrs. Kim in a while in, the, in this season. We haven't seen her in a while, and she comes back. She's like, don't forget about me. I'm just as cool and fun. Let me tell you something about Dean. What I found very interesting with Dean in this season is that they really wanted to showcase the difference between Dean and like Dean's kind of lifestyle of being like having to work extra jobs to, you know, to pay for the life, to just pay for anything to, you know, he did have a wife and, you know, he had to work extra jobs for that. He didn't, he wasn't going to school. He had to work extra jobs to make some extra money and things like that. And then we get um, Logan, who just has everything handed to him. He has a rich family and all that. I find it very interesting how, you know, in this, in this episode specifically, they doubled down just one last time to show the difference between Dean and Logan. Here we see... Dean um, and Rory, who haven't been able to spend a lot of time with each other, they we see them here with like this makeshift, you know, hand-me-down lunch that they're having. Which you know what? Listen, is it is it the best lunch of all time? No, but he's trying his best, right? Um, and I think honestly, I honestly I'll, I'll say it, I think the writers did Dean a little dirty in this season, um, but I think it's mainly just to show the the difference between just to kind of really spell it out for the people that don't get it, just the difference between Dean and Logan, right? So, um, and on top of that, what they did in the scene is, and this this ends up being incredibly predictable for how why they were doing this, but Rory asked Dean, hey, did you read the article I sent you? And, and like he did, but he, you know, he wasn't, he didn't really give any constructive criticism because that's, that's not, that's not him. He's never been that way, except for the very first episode that he was ever in. But also, he's never been that way. Um, and I know Rory was expecting more from him, you know, in response to her writing that article. And she, pro she probably did not get the response that she was looking for. So they really doubled down in the scene to showcase why, how, how, different Dean is from Logan here 
like really, di really, really different, um, which is sad, in my opinion, because I think they did Dean a little dirty here. And, and this is not the first time they, I believe that the writers did Dean dirty in this, in this series. Shout out to Lorelai and her outfit here. Good Lord. Oof. Luke saw that when he opened the door and he's like, I am getting some tonight. <laughs> Little did he know he is not getting some. You know why? Because let, let me skip ahead. This guy shows up. This guy right here shows up. Mr. TJ, whose name is not TJ. He shows up and he just ruins the mood. We'll get to that in a second. We have Zach and Lane here. Zach tells Lane, hey, listen, your mom put a little voodoo curse on me, I believe. She is not happy. Lane is like, how did she find out? <gasps> oh, I know how she found out. It's Keon. That's how she found out. So they have that little moment here. TJ shows up to Luke's house in the middle of Luke and Lorelai's fantastic dinner that he cooked. Uh, him, and, him and Liz are in a big, big fight. So we goes to the one place that he knows, which is Luke's place, and he just shows up, and he's just in his feels the entire episode, which gets a little annoying, I'm not going to lie. I just feel bad for Luke and Lorelai, because poor Luke, he was like, he made this delicious dinner, Lorelai showed up looking all cutie patootie, he's like, yo, it is going down tonight, and then Liz and TJ just had other plans for them. This is a good time to remind you that I do have a podcast. If you like podcasts, you can uh, listen to the Vibe with Kai podcast. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Pop Podcasts, and Spotify. And it's also available here on YouTube so you can watch it, where I interview a bunch of people, not just Gilmore Girl-related stuff, but um, a bunch of people and things. I talk about a lot of different things in regards to um, life and living a good life full of good vibes. But every now and then, I will actually talk Gilmore Girls on my podcast. Most recently, I interviewed uh, Shelly Cole, who played Madeline on Gilmore Girls. I interviewed John Cabrera, who played Brian on Gilmore Girls. I've interviewed um, Valerie Campbell, who was the key set customer for Gilmore Girls. And next week, I'm actually interviewing uh, Rini, who plays the who plays the role of uh, Lulu on Gilmore Girls. So we're going to be talking. If you if you are interested in podcasts just about life and Gilmore Girls and everything else in between, uh, subscribe to the Vibe with Kai podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and right here on uh, the YouTube. As soon, okay, so Richard and Emily, they canceled the normal Friday dinner. Why? So they can get Lorelai out the way. And so they tricked Rory into showing up. And then they're pretty much just like invited all of their friends and their sons so they can just go around and auction her off i guess in a way which is disgusting i hate like this 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 entire sequence with rory at this house just once again this is two episodes in a row that just reiterated why i will i'm not a big fan of richard and emily i'm not i am not a big fan of richard and emily i don't like the way that they are treating rory and lorelei here nothing is ever good enough for them you know, and before you sit here and say, hey, you know, um, it's they, they, they knew it was Dean and, and Rory deserves better than Dean. Don't forget that they also felt that Rory deserved better than Jess. Don't forget that they believe that Lorelai deserves better than Luke, a.k.a. they want somebody who is not going to soil the Gilmore name with their poorness. And I mean that from a financial standpoint and a family standpoint they want to marry into a rich family they only rich families associate with rich families and this is par for the course for them and it just like once again it's not surprising it, it was just very disappointing to watch and i know somebody in my previous recap said that i looked too much into it and you know a couple people have said that you know you know we enjoy this because we, do, we enjoy watching the rich people do what rich people do because it's like this fantastical world that they live in that we'll never be a part of. And I guess in a way, I see what they're saying. But for me, like, and if you feel that way, if you're listening to this and you feel that way, I'm not going to discredit you. You are more than welcome to feel that way. Me personally, I can't feel that way. At no point will I ever want to be like any of the people on this screen right here, ever. It's not an attractive lifestyle to me at all. It's stuffy. 
everybody has a stick stick up their booty and it's kind of sad to watch in my opinion um but that's just my opinion it just was really disappointing to watch liz ends up showing up liz luke and uh tj are here arguing with each other poor luke once again is just trying to get him out of get them both out of there so he can do what he has to do you know with lorelei meanwhile while this is happening lorelei's on the phone trying to you know talk to her daughter and to richard and emily and handle that situation their poor date night just got ruined and i feel bad i feel bad for them and then of course why wouldn't logan be at this rich people party why wouldn't he be of course he shows up to save rory from creepy mcgee that was saying some questionable things of course he would do that of course he's there pretends to be her boyfriend to save her from you know he's 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 the savior coming in to save the day which we see again later oh boy i just it's just it's just i i don't i don't like it i don't like it give keon and lane a sitcom give them a sitcom give them a spin-off i would watch that would you not would you not, if it's Lane, Keon, and Mrs. Kim, I would watch that in a heartbeat. How amazing would that be? Give them a spinoff. A lot of people ask me all the time, if you if you could see any spinoff from Gilmore Girls, usually my answer would be like none. Like, I don't want to see it. There's not a single spinoff I would like to see. I want to see the spinoff. I want to see Keon, Lane, and Mrs. Kim have their own show. I think that would be a fantastic, fantastic show. Not like an hour show. Maybe it's like a 30-minute, you know, thing kind of like New Girl, like a 30-minute kind of show like that or something like that. But I think I, th that would be great. I thought that I think that would be awesome. Of course, their date night was ruined, but they still get to uh, share a lovely kiss here. <laughs> and <laughs> Luke has a very funny moment here when he says, um, uh, thank you for not being related to me. <laughs> and Lorelai's like, what? <laughs> He's like, I think that came out wrong. <laughs> I thought that was a, a cute moment between these two. Oh, boy. The ending of this episode, we see... Um, so, Dean was supposed to pick up Rory at 8.30. Um, she comes out. She's about 15, 20 minutes late. And she comes out. There's a bunch of rich people dressed in suits and... Um, laughing and judging and i i'm not gonna lie i feel for dean here i really do because i've dated somebody where i didn't feel like i belonged and there were so many times that in the situations that i found myself in with this person that i was dating that i would question like what am i doing here like i'm not i'm not what you want i'm not what your family wants or like why am i here and it got to a point that she started, she stopped, she stopped fighting for me, you know, because she, maybe it is, maybe it wasn't what, maybe it wasn't what she wanted because that's not what her family wanted. And Dean, in my opinion, did nothing wrong here. I would feel the exact same way. Could you imagine, you know, the person that you're supposed to meet up with walks out late. And she's followed by all of these guys that are oogling and ogling and judging you at this rich mansion that is hosting a party in spite of you, or because of you, I should say, is hosting this party because she's dating you. That's why they're throwing this party, because of him. And he looks over at them and, and he, un he understands immediately like, and cause she looks happy and he, Dean would not fit in at this party. Even if she's like, Hey, why don't you come in for a little bit? You know, dang well that, she, that he would not fit in at this party. I feel for Dean here. I understand that he, he yes, he, he cheated. Like everybody will jump to, well, he cheated on his wife. Okay. But he like, I'm not trying to like, let me preface this by saying that I'm not, justifying his cheating by any means but it's not like he cheated on his wife with like a hooker he cheated on his on his wife with rory somebody that he was never over he loved her he always loved her cheating is cheating 
no matter what the reason is. And it's bad, no matter what the reason is. But I think context is also important here. He's always loved Rory. He, is he perfect? No, not by any means. He's far from perfect. He's made mistakes. So is Rory. So is Jess. But good Lord, I, I felt him here just as a human being. I felt it. And I, I, I probably would have done the same thing. Because she didn't even fight it. She knew. She knew. And then who's there to, to, save, to save the day again? Mr. Logan. You remember, <coughs> excuse me. Remember earlier in the episode when, um, when she asked Dean, hey, did you read my article? And he's like, yeah, I read it. I thought it was fine. And he didn't really give anything, you know, much to it. Logan read the article. And he had very constructive, um, constructive ideas and thoughts about it. Logan come, came to save the day when she was being hit on by the creepy guy. Logan is here when she breaks Dean's heart. The writers did Dean dirty in order to make Logan a thing. Now I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they did it because they didn't like uh, Jared Padalecki because I'm sure they obviously did because I know he comes back for a year in the life. And I, I know that he, you know, he pretty much was on his way out because, you know, he had other opportunities to perform and do other shows. A show that was a very successful show, might I add, Supernatural. So maybe they, I mean, maybe they had to give him a quick exit, which I get. It's just sad to watch, you know, and I, I am, I'm Team Dean. I'm Team Dean. I really am. I think I like him because of his flaws. Because he's not perfect, like all these other guys. He's not the most attractive one. He's not the bad boy. He's not rich. He's probably, people are like, he's the most boring. Well, no, he's not the most boring. He's the most normal out of all these guys. I just found that very interesting that they did that. I'm Team Dean. We'll see what happens with Logan, but right now I'm Team Dean. Lorelai calls Richard and Emily to confront them about this. And there is a really interesting exchange that they have where they pretty much say, you failed Rory. So we had to step in. That's what they say to Lorelai. And that's when I, that's one, two episodes in a row where I'm like, man, the writers don't want me to like Emily and Richard. They have not changed to me. Their arc, their character arc has remained the exact same. That what they pulled in this episode and in, and in the previous episode with Luke and in this episode with Rory and Dean and Lorelai, they would have done the exact same thing in episode one, season one. And it's just a turnoff to me. I just will never be able to identify with that. And then the episode ends, we see Rory coming home from her escapade with the, with, the college, with the college boys, which is quite dangerous, in my opinion, at least. I think, Lore, I think Lorelai realizes that. She sees her, and I'm interested to see where this goes. A lot of people always talk about Rory in her college years. And I'm curious what y'all think I'm going to think of Rory in her college years. Comment below and let me know. I'm very, very curious. So what do I think of the episode? What was the episode score? Well, I'm actually going to give this an eight and a half out of 10. I know given <laughs> everything that I just said about like everything here, um, I actually did like the episode because of the conversations that I'm having in my brain about some of these characters. This episode, in my opinion, was way, way better 
than the previous episode. I know a lot of people like the previous episode, the You Jump, I Jump Jack. This episode was so much better. So much better than that, in my opinion. I would rewatch this episode over You Jump, I Jump Jack. So I'm going to give it eight, eight and a half out of ten. And like, here's the thing, a lot of people will sometimes mistake, they'll be like, oh, Kai doesn't like a specific character, or he'll go all in about how much he doesn't like Richard and Emily, so of course he's going to give it a low score. No, that's not necessarily what I look for. For me, it's about the story as a whole. If there's like a surprise, or if it's good writing, or if, it, um, if it's just interesting. And this was an interesting episode. You Jump, I Jump Jack wasn't really an interesting episode to me. This episode was way more interesting. So I give it an 8.5 out of 10. I really like this episode, despite, you know, the issues that I have with certain characters. With that said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, and you're going to be the first to be notified anytime that I post something here on YouTube. I post it here before I post it anywhere else. You can also follow me on your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at The Vibe of Kai, where I'm always posting things that'll help you do good, feel good, be good, and live a good life full of good vibes. My friends, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate you more than you know, more than you realize. Thank you for watching. As always, God bless and good vibes.